Welcome to my latest course, How to Combine Traditional and Digital Art. Some of you might realize that that's the exactly the same name as the last course I did, but there, this time it's different because in the last course I used 3D Studio Max for the 3D graphics, Sketchbook Pro for the 2D graphics, and Traditional Drawing for the Traditional Drawing. This time, this is an amazing development for you, I'm going to use applications that do not cost money, so the, the, except for the traditional drawing. So the free applications are Blender, that will replace 3D Studio Max. Blender is a great application, it makes 3D animation, does the similar things to 3D Studio Max, but it's free. Critter is less well known, but again it's free on the laptop, on the computer, sorry, and also that replaces Sketchbook Pro, the functions of Sketchbook Pro. And obviously traditional drawings, that's the same technology we use pencil and paper. I don't think that will really change ever. So again, I'm going to take you through the process. And in this tutorial, it's going to be a bit shorter, a bit more, a bit more concise. And I'm, but this time I'm going to do two buildings because I've sp I spent some time in Montreal, in Canada, and there's an amazing place there where Expo 67, the ex exhibition, the World Exhibition for 1967 was, and it still has many elements from that, including a really interesting building called Habitat 67 and the Biosphere, which is basically a Buckminster Fuller geodesic dome. So quickly, what we, you will learn from this course. So you will learn how to make professional standard pieces of artwork in an architectural theme in my own style using the free programs Blender, Critter, and my Tradigital sketch process, I take you through my art process. You can learn from what I do. So I don't really, you know, don't really copy what I do. I don't want to see exact replicas of this artwork, because also I sell this artwork. But I want you to look at my process, look at how I work, and um, let that inspire you. I also want to show you what is possible with these great free software applications, of course. Um, I want you to teach you the functions of Blender, Critter, and traditional, traditional drawing, excuse me, and how to combine these as I work through the project. So learn by doing. Two for the price of one in this course. So I will take you through how to make two artwork images. One, as I said, one is the Biosphere Montreal, one is Expo 67 Montreal. More about these buildings later. You can see in other tutorials, I use much more expensive programs such as 3D Studio Max. I want to show you how to make similar things using this free software. If you think about it, this is amazing. When I started doing 3D graphics properly in 1999, all the programs were very expensive. I'm not even sure if Blender was around, but as the years progressed, Blender has become a much more powerful program. So the first, th this first tutorial is about research and development, sketches and photographs of the buildings I'm going to use. And the final image, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet because that's the nature of art, but I have an idea of the two images, how they want to look, sort of quite graphic-y but quite loose, perhaps some ink over them, and then again combined with 3D graphics, pen and um, some 2D elements. So the first one is the Bucky Biosphere, Montreal in Canada. Um, so these are photos and live sketches of the work. So I'm just going to move to the first slide, which shows the geodesic structure. Um, just to start with, <clears throat> to let you know, I'll take the, I've extracted this from Wikipedia. So the Biosphere is a museum in Montreal about the environment. It is on the Ile Saint-Hélène, excuse my French, <laughs> in the former pavilion of the United States for the 1967 World Expo 67. The architect of the geodesic dome was Buckminster Fuller. The building originally formed an enclosed structure of steel and acrylic cells 76 meters 250 foot in diameter and 62 meters 200 foot high. Architects from Golden Metac Productions designed the interior ex exhibition space. So this structure is amazing. I, I loved walking around it. It was a beautiful day. I did this in early June, so that was a few weeks ago now, June 2014, and um, 
I've always loved Buckminster Fuller. I bought a book on Buckminster Fuller when I was at art college. I, I loved it. It was, it, was, it was an awakening for me. It was, it was amazing. I can't quite explain. It was about his structures. He was trained as an engineer, but he, was, his, he, he made architecture as well. It was sort of spanned across the two disciplines. Um, and, and it's a lot to be learned from him today. Is the purity of his designs. As we can see here in the, the interior, this is the other design. I think it fits quite well. I mean, it's, it's completely different, the, the interior elements, by, it was in Metac. Um, so these are the, what I researched. And then this is the photograph of the lattice geodesic dome structure. Um, that's, um, so it's a very nice pattern. Um, excuse me, this, this slide thing keeps coming up on the bottom left. It's um, just the way the Google slide works, so excuse me if that is annoying you. Um, so this is a really nice structure here. It gives a lot of potential. And then this is the kind of composition I want in the end. I think the dome's a bit stretched widthways, but you can see, you know, the, 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 amazing, the amazing look of it. Okay, so here's some initial sketches I did on site, you know, the, the urban sketching process where you sit down and sketch what you see without taking it home. So, and I'm beginning to come up with ideas about the composition with my usual sort of elements of road signs popping out, you know, to show we live in a information society, etc, etc. Again, this is a close-up of the, I think it's METAC, excuse the pronunciation structure here. Just um, pushing things around. And then again, I quite like this. Here's the structure. I didn't bother doing the lattices. And there's the internal structure. A little sign here. And I like this road sign, P10. It kind of stood out for me. And it's on the right. So the biosphere concept composition sketches. So this is where I went home and I looked at the photographs and I took started I'm starting to develop what the final composition will be and th these are going to be portrait both buildings compositions I'm going to decide I've decided to become portraits so they're going to be up so there's three here so looking at different elements perhaps nice circles to show energies or trees the people the internal and the external structure the external structure is going to be very difficult to make in 3d I have found a 3d mesh but the person who made it hasn't got back to me and because I'm selling some of this course I'm probably I'm not gonna I'm probably not gonna make the 3d mesh I'm going to draw it and more about that later um, but that's perfectly adequate for this this, um, this these artworks so the next one is another three portrait images and again pushing things around um, I can't read my writing here something dynamic perspective here so it shows a perspective and um, there you go so that's the research over for the biosphere. So now Habitat 67, Montreal, Canada again. So there's a definite theme with these two images. Photos and live sketches for the artwork. So here's this amazing building. And let's, I'll have to read this because again, I can't remember what it's about. But in Wikipedia, it's, it says Habitat 67, or simply Habitat, is a complex in Montreal, Canada by Israeli-Canadian architect Mosh Safdi, excuse if that's incorrect pronunciation. It was originally conceived, built as a pavilion for Expo 67, World's Fair Montreal 1967. It is next to the St. Lawrence River. Habitat 67 is widely considered an architectural landmark. Okay, and what I love about this building, it's very cubey, um, and it's got light shining on it. I love the light, and it's just the sort of thing I like. And a lot of my a lot of my drawings and art, I like to segment things off and make cubes and shapes. So this is exactly the kind of building that I love to sit down and draw. So here are some more photographs. So it was on the same day I went to the dome. I actually walked here and then walked back to Montreal. And um, here, this is the kind of composition I want. Again, um, portrait. The landscapes are okay, but I've done a lot of landscape work at the moment so I want to do some portrait work. If you don't know what portrait work is, it's um, vertical, not horizontal. It doesn't mean drawing someone's face. Usually, It doesn't always mean drawing someone's face. So here's a live urban sketch of it. I sat down on the grass near the road. It was probably quite strange because cars were going past me. They were probably wondering why I was sitting on the grass verge. And 
just getting all these QB elements in and the energy and the, the repeating patterns. Again, doing the same thing. The, the structure is actually quite hard to copy exactly. Even I've been trying in 3D to model it. And again, it, I'm, I'm going to try and do an impression of it because if I spend the whole time making the, the complete model, it would be ages. And then again here, here's some more live sketches and some signs. Casino de Montreal, that's a nice building as well. So Habitat 67, Montreal, Canada, concept, composition, sketches. So again, I took it home and looked at how the landscape would look if I did it as a landscape. And then I decided, no, I, I quite like the portrait look. And I think you'll agree it gives more of kind of a dynamic stacking effect, whereas the landscape going back gives more of a sort of driving along a car effect. Um, just go back and actually you can see this building in reality in one of my YouTube videos. If you're subscribed, you can see it or look in my channel and I've got a drive past of this and actually the biosphere so check that out as well. I might try and put links up. So that's the thing there and that, that's the signs and um, finally that's the end of this lesson. So if you're doing research for a building go out there take photographs take sketches then take your information back then do some more concept sketches to develop what the final composition will look like at home and then develop it in 3D whatever paint even sculpture, yeah? Always trying to do some research first. I recommend it. it, it helps me and hopefully it will help you as well. Okay, I look forward to um, doing the next lesson and um, speak to you soon. Any comments, criticisms, questions, please go ahead. I'm always happy to help out and also check out my website www.jamesableart.com for more tutorials and some of my artwork. Okay.